Hi there and welcome to the Car Advice News Desk. It's almost time to knock off for Christmas. So this week we'll take a look at 10 of the biggest car news stories of the year. These are the ones that grabbed your attention and clocked up the greatest number of reader views. It's kind of like you guys wrote the news for me this week. Well, coming up, an online leak that caused a stir. A ute that failed a swerve test and what could be our future police cars. First up though, back in July, pricing and specifications for the 2017 Volkswagen Tiguan range were confirmed. More than most stories of this sort, the Tiguan really got our audience going. It has since arrived with the base model Trendline 110 TSI priced from 31,990, 3,000 more than the outgoing entry level, though the new one is larger and better equipped. Also in July, a brochure for the facelifted 2016 Mazda 3 was leaked online, giving us a sneak peek at the minor design changes, including a revised grille, new rear fog lights and new reflectors. The new 3 was officially unveiled in Japan not long after the leak and arrived in Australian showrooms the following month. The 2017 Toyota Land Cruiser 70 Series garnered a lot of attention. Ahead of production starting in August, back in June, details of the upgrade were revealed. More power and torque and a swag of new features. New injectors and engine changes giving it that power and torque bump. And it now has cruise control, automatic locking hubs, a single 130 litre fuel tank rather than two 90 litre tanks and now five airbags in total. Back in February, we were swept up in Ford fever with the limited edition 2016 Ford Falcon XR6 Turbo Sprint and XR8 Turbo Sprint sedans revealed. The return of the Sprint badge was initially leaked online and Ford were quick to confirm the details. More power, upgraded brakes, a graphics package, a bigger price tag too. It seemed everyone wanted to know the details. Well, the fifth most popular story this year was also a Ford story, the return of the Ford Bronco. The iconic off-roader is set to return with production to start in Michigan in 2018. Expect the new Bronco badge model to be rugged and tough and possibly a rival to the Jeep Wrangler. It's also been revealed the Ranger will soon be built in Mexico for a North American market debut. An interesting twist for the Australian developed ute. Now this one was big news back in February, but there hasn't been much word in the time since. At the time, the government was planning to allow parallel or grey import vehicles into Australia from 2018. It was announced by Major Projects Minister Paul Fletcher and included changes that would allow individuals to import one new car every two years and they had to be less than 12 months old. Imports would be allowed from the United Kingdom and Japan initially. Nothing new on the proposed new parallel import laws for a while now, but we will be looking into this one. The unveiling of the 2017 Volkswagen Amarok in May was also popular. It's officially arrived here last month and is the only ute in the segment with a turbo diesel V6 engine. The 3 litre engine produces 165 kilowatts and 550 newton metres, more than the twin turbo 4 cylinder at 132 and 420. The Toyota Hilux was back in the spotlight in October. Australia's top selling light commercial vehicle was put through a European extreme handling evaluation called the Moose Test. A Swedish publication put the new generation Hilux through the evasive manoeuvre designed to simulate avoiding hitting a moose under load too. And it dangerously cocked its right wheels. The problem was deemed to be a result of tyre grip and the absence of an anti-rollover system. When Subaru revealed the 2016 Lavorg would be offered with the same powertrain as the Subaru WRX back in March, we all got a little excited. The performance wagon has a two-litre four-cylinder boxer engine with a CVT automatic and paddle shifters, no manual. The wagon's Australian launch occurred in June. A list of top Australian car news stories wouldn't be complete without Holden. No surprise, Holden's Commodore has been a hot topic for some time now, with the company moving closer to the end of its Australian manufacturing program. The first official details came back in October, but it was early December when the new imported Commodore was officially revealed. Front and all-wheel drive, petrol and diesel, four and six cylinder options. Holden also confirmed the new gen will be ready for action as a general duties and highway patrol vehicle when it arrives in February 2018. Well, thanks for joining me every week to catch up on the headlines and I will be back in the new year. So until then, have a safe and happy time on the road over the holidays. Merry Christmas and a happy new year.